Crohn's disease, what happens, it can go from mouth to anus, but typically in the small intestine. So in Crohn's disease, what happens if it is in the small intestine, it could have a normal intestine in between. So it could skip the lesions. Whereas in ulcerative colitis, if it happens in the second colon, so it will continue and it will not skip in between the normal colon. If it is there, it will be continuous. If you have a left-sided colitis, it will be continuous. It will not skip in between the normal colon. Whereas in Crohn's disease, it, you may have in between normal colon, normal intestine, small intestine, so it will skip the lesions. That is another important distinction between the ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease. What about the signs and symptoms? There are many overlap, but ulcerative colitis is known for bloody diarrhea, bloody diarrhea, blood in the stool. Whereas in Crohn's disease it is there but it is not that up to a level where you see in the ulcerative colitis. How about the surgery? <clears throat> surgery may help in Crohn's disease but it can go from top to bottom and it may not completely cure. Okay. Whereas in ulcerative colitis what happens it is continuous so yes it may help but you may end up having a variety of surgeries depending upon the extent of ulcerative colitis you may have and the normal route from uh, rectum to anus for the uh, residuals or the waste to exit the body the stool surfaces in ulcerative colitis if needed, it starts with diet and medication and if needed, the surgery may be required and if that happens, you may have to have a, and I'll show you some pictures, you may have to create an opening into the abdominal wall and or you may have to use the intestine to create a pouch or the uh, bag to hold and then release the stools or feces. So that would be frustrating, that would be disgusting. So that is another difference between the ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Generally speaking, Crohn's disease, one more distinction, Crohn's disease, because it happens from top to bottom, um, what are the chances of developing malignancy or the cancer in the Crohn's disease? It's there, but statistically speaking, ulcerative colitis have a higher probability of having a cancer as long as you are having pancolitis. And remember, pancolitis is where you have the entire large intestine with ulcerative colitis. But not that everybody has that kind of ulcerative colitis. You could have a sigmoid, sigmoid colon only impacted, or you could have a left one, or you could have an extensive one, or you have the entire one. So, the higher risk of cancer in ulcerative colitis are when you are dealing with a pancolitis, not with the proctitis, or not with the left ulcerative colitis, okay? So, there are some silver lining in that dark cloud, okay? So, this is just to quickly give you an overview of the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. I have multiple slides uh, narrating different aspects of each one of these. So, <clears throat> one important thing is in 10% of the cases, it is difficult to differentiate between the two because the symptoms and signs do overlap. So, sometimes doctor may have to do some additional testing to figure out if, if there is a small intestine involved, then you are not dealing with ulcerative colitis. One way to differentiate. So there is overlap. 10% of the cases are difficult to diagnose. Uh, the differences I already highlighted. I am not going to go over those things again. Uh, let me see what other aspects that would help 
all of you better digest the difference between the two. So, there are some statistics out there about the Crohn's disease. In 30% of the patients, it could impact this portion, 30% that portion, 40% remainder of the portion. But long story short, it could go from mouth to anus. Although having said that, generally, the Crohn's disease impacts small intestine. Of course, the Crohn's disease is unpredictable and it can cover from mouth to anus. It is chronic and relapsing. Uh, younger the age of onset, the better the chance of recurrence with the Crohn's disease. Some hallmarks or the distinctive features of the Crohn's disease is when you look at uh, uh, using the endoscopy and colonoscopy and biopsy and all that, you can have a cobblestone appearance, the skip lesions, fistula, these are the hallmarks of the uh, Crohn's disease. Um, the biopsy would show granulomas, that is another hallmark. Uh, as far as ulcerative colitis goes, it starts with the rectum and the lower part of the colon, but we are talking about large intestine, right? It may affect the entire colon, but as I was saying that if you see something wrong in the small bowel, then you are probably dealing with Crohn's disease as opposed to ulcerative colitis. So these are some slides to help you uh, take a look at what is the difference between ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease. So ulcerative would impact only the inner layer, the Crohn's would impact all layers of the bowel. Uh, in ulcerative, there is a continuous inflammation. Crohn's, it can skip lesions, that's the whole mark. And see, this would make more sense. So this is something who may have a Crohn's disease. So you have this impaired portion, but in between you have normal intestine. Whereas ulcerative, there is a continuous involvement. It could start right here, it could go further, it could go further, it could go all the way. But you will not have a skip lesions in ulcerative colitis as is typical with the Crohn's disease and the layers that we just talked about. Severe and bloody diarrhea is the one that makes ulcerative colitis, ulcerative colitis. And of course, there are other uh, signs and symptoms, but there is an overlap and uh, that makes 10% of the patients with ulcerative colitis and or the Crohn's disease difficult to diagnose. The risk of cancer, as I was saying before, when you are dealing with pancreatitis, that is the entire large intestine is impacted and you have ulcerative colitis, then only we are talking about high risk of colon cancer. Um, for Crohn's disease, yes, there is increased risk, but not as compared to the ulcerative colitis. Uh, the surgery portion we already covered that um, what could be cumbersome, what could be frustrating would be the, the pouch or the bag that you have to have with the ulcerative colitis. Crohn's disease, you can do the surgery but remember regardless of ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, um, that's the last resort that one may want to consider. Of course, but you may have to have the surgery when the diet is not working, the medication is not working, there are no other options out there, there are potential life-threatening complications like malignancy, developing the malignancy, cancer, things like that. Toxic megacolon, so many things. So, this is again just summarizing the same thing, but I think this would make it more clear. See, this is also to colitis. So what we see here, this is called left-sided ulcerative colitis. So the remainder is all normal. The Crohn's disease, as we know that it could have a skip lesions. So in between, you have a normal colon, but in between, the Crohn's disease, you can have variety of scenarios. Theoretically speaking, by definition, it can go from mouth to anus, 
but in reality, in majority of the cases, it is frequently seen in the small intestine. But these are the different possible scenarios of what you may say about the Crohn's disease. And I like this slide because this really explains what is ulcerative colitis. So someone can have only this much, still they are labeled as proctitis, which is a kind of ulcerative colitis. It goes further, you are involving the sigmoid colon, so they say proctosigmoiditis. You can have a distal colitis, some literature would call it left-sided colitis, okay? Then you can have extensive colitis, and then the entire intestine is involved. Then it is called pancolitis. So you can have a proctitis to pancolitis. The higher risk of malignancy is only when you are dealing with pancolitis. So I really like this slide. It does explain the things in details. These are the couple of slides I was just putting here. Um, there are various uh, videos out there if you actually want to see how the surgery is done. But these are the different course of action that can be taken to ease the patient where there are medications and other stuff that is not working out. Okay, so that's all I have as far as the digestive system goes. I wanted to explain the ulcerative colitis, the inflammatory bowel disease or the Crohn's disease. As I started reading and researching and learning all these details, I thought it would make sense that if I go from mouth to the anus and then talk about the ulcerative colitis. Okay. This reminds me that we are in the Thanksgiving and uh, people go crazy, they, they do a lot of shopping, they eat a lot. Watch your diet and be ready for the consequences. Too much alcohol, too much smoking, too much sugar, too much salt leads to obesity, leads to some of the disorders that we discussed. I remember a friend of mine, he lives in the Danville, Illinois. He is a Babai professor, he is a cardiologist. And he tells me that sometimes uh, some of the patients he goes as a part of his routine to see the patients in the hospital thinking that somebody may be having some heart threatening, uh, life threatening, heart related issues. And uh, actually it turns out to be the gastric reflux as opposed to having any concerning cardiac issues. So he was recently sharing with me that one of his patients, he went to see him. The patient was afraid, thinking that he is having heart attack. Actually, he was having just a GERD, the gastroesophageal reflux disease, just a heartburn. But the friend of mine who is a cardiologist, cardiologist was telling me that as soon as he was admitted into the hospital, he ordered a lot of food. And when he went to see the patient, he was eating. So what's your diet? So he told the patient that, you know what, you should watch your diet. So the patient goes to say that, well, I do watch and then I eat. That's what we mean when we say watch your diet. Watch your diet means make sure whatever you eat, eat in moderation. It should not lead to obesity. Anything in moderation, that matters. That's all I have for now. Hope you can get a couple of nuggets out of this presentation series. Stay healthy, watch your diet and enjoy the remainder of the Thanksgiving weekend. Take care. Bye now.